everybody! Want to know all of the recent news on Universal festivals, closures, openings, and everything else? Well, I'm your guy. I am Winu, your weekly Universal news and updates. And if you read the title and saw the thumbnail, you're more than likely here for Mardi Gras. So let's not blather on about an intro and dive right into my first topic. <laughs> Don't fail me now because this is Mardi Gras. So this week, Mardi Gras was officially announced, and this year it's going to be called Mardi Gras 2021 International Flavors of Carnival. It will run from February 6th to March 28th. Due to the new theme, food stands will now be located across the entire park and not just in New York. These will be 13 different locations that serve over 70 different foods and dishes from the most famous carnivals of that area. The new countries that will be added for this event will be Puerto Rico, Spain, Belgium, the Bahamas, Cuba, Canada, Italy, Colombia, and France. These are not including ones that will already be in, as more countries than these will be in the event. All booths for all of the foods will open at 4 p.m. Some other festivities will also be happening with this event, such as there will be decorations all around the parks, there will be stationed floats that are normal Mardi Gras floats and pirate themes throughout the park, prepaid testing lanyards that are still a work in progress, musicians, street entertainments, beads, and more scattered around the park, and a place to take selfies with the floats that will be set up in Music Plaza Courtyard, along with additional seating. This will replace the usual concerts that happen at the event. Also, a brand new Mardi Gras tribute store that will have three themed rooms has come. The three rooms will be a hopping 1920s jazz parlor with belling brass and dueling pianos, a nautical cemetery where sea captains have been laid to rest, and a waterfront warehouse where stashed with smuggled treasures and trinkets, adding even more to this event. Adding along with the tribute store, there is now a Mardi Gras scavenger hunt. Nothing has really been said about the scavenger hunt yet, but it's something new and will be interesting to see once we get more details. So let's continue some Mardi Gras news in my next topic. Food and restaurants, the topic that's probably a bigger contributor to the Mardi Gras topic than the Mardi Gras topic itself. So this week, the Mardi Gras food and drink list was revealed. It goes like this. The Bahamas have jerk chicken, jerk jackfruit, goombay smash, and carob lager. Belgium has Belgian liege waffles, Brussels fries with roasted garlic, veganese, Holgener Whitbear, Limonvins strawberry lambic, St. Bernard's apt 12, Brazil has Manca de Camaro with rice, Brigandeiros, stuffed cazina, pineapple caprihana with punch, strawberry caprihana with punch, and mixed caprihana. Canada has beef short ribbed poutine, Nutella Canadian donuts, maple Canadian donuts, sugar shack springtime punch, and lab lap blue. Colombia has cartinas apras, lemona de coco, and coco loco. Cuba has a Cuban sandwich, Cuban flan, and Cuba library. France has poached pure cream brulee crepe, Vio Fleury Cotes du Lone Blanc, Notorious Pink, Vieux Chateau Lume Bradix Rogue, Famille Perrin Cotes du Lone Rogue, Germany has pork schnitzel slider, Vegan Bratwurst with beer braised onion, Bavarian pretzel, Weehees de Hanser Crystallizer, Weehees de Beisner Vitas, Aked Schwerium Marzen Ruschwer, Tea Skimmet Riesen Cabinet Estate. Italy has Italian rainbow cookies, cannolis, arcinis, affogados, fanitils, Vienna Mascato di Astis, Corsito Chianti, Canto Zagiti Mozza di Dinto, and Di Abruzzo. New Orleans has a crawfish boil, jambalaya, mufaletta sandwich, begnets, andaly twister tater, 
Twisted Tater, Abita Purple Haze, Tropical Storm Punch, and King Cake Milk Punch. Puerto Rico has Peno and Monofogo, Picadillo and Panada, Quesadillo and a Pina Verde. Spain has Perla Mixta, Chandelier Plate, Licha Flita, Pinord La Dama Cava, Don Orlioco Alabino, Hacadina de Arizona Rolls, Haza Venus Vijas Rojas, Trinidad and Tobago have Fully Pineapple Trini Chow, Queens Park Swizzle, and Caribou Lager. Not for Mardi Gras. In the moment to remove all dip and dots from the park, the one in Toon Lagoon is no more. We saw this starting last week, and it's obviously been continued as dip and dots are being removed from the parks. Also, a new E.T. milk chocolate bar was made available. So, if you want to have an E.T. milk chocolate bar, I guess this is how you would get one. Don't really see much of a reason for this, but obviously whatever somebody wants they could get, and Universal will take any opportunity that they can to sell people things, especially at this time. So let's talk about something that Universal will probably sell a lot of tickets due to people wanting to ride in my next topic. Construction! The topic that currently holds the Velocicoaster. And I hope it won't be in this topic for too long because I want to ride this thing. So this week, one of the Velociraptors was completely unwrapped and it has now been seen that it is blue. You can now see that this was blue as I predicted a couple of videos ago, and also shows that all of the blue theming of this ride might actually come down to be based after this Velociraptor. So also this week, some Universal Creative team members were seen taking camera equipment onto the Velocicoaster site, giving the idea that we might get another look inside sometime soon in the form of a video. I'm also hoping that this has to somehow tie into blue being unwrapped, because I mean, who wouldn't want to see that? So some new construction walls in Jurassic Park went up, and we don't really know what they are yet. There obviously isn't that much information I can give you, because we have no clue what these are or what they're for. So also, behind some construction walls, part of the fence on the patio outside of Hogshead has been removed. This probably has to do with why there are actually walls around this area in general, and it's not just so that cast members can see how the testing is going. So also seen from testing, some brake run lights that change color and fog effects or smoke effects have been added. We don't really know if this effect is for fog, smoke, mist, or whatever, but we do know that these are here and it's cool to see that these will be part of the ride. Over by where people have been looking at the Velocicoaster, the waiting area by Toon Lagoon was prepped for a fresh coat of paint on the fences, and later this week would receive that coat. Finally, as an update in New York's Ben & Jerry's turning into a haagen tables and serving counters have been removed, but some cow theming still remains. It's kind of weird to see it this barren, and I'm interested to see how the theming will go again. So that was kind of just some general stuff about Ben & Jerry's, but let's see more general news in my next topic. General news! So what's new in this topic this week? Well, it seems that finally somebody got him his gosh darn coffee, because the Revenge of the Mummy was reopened. It started with some cue ropes being placed on Thursday and would later open on Saturday, saying that the maintenance was to enhance the digital effects, making the screens look more clear and realistic. However, the ride will close due to technical issues the same day. This probably had to do with the fact that the effects were brand new and also that people were piling up to re-ride the ride. So now some new advertisements have been put in. Yes, I am basically now Universal's advertising campaign. So ads for The Office from Peacock have appeared. Also, Elevators has reverbed to a 8p 
people maximum capacity now that the busy season is over. I honestly thought that it was less than this originally, but apparently not. So I guess it's good that it's back to that. Finally, Jurassic Park River Adventure closed for its scheduled refurbishments, putting walls in front of the entrance to block people from entering. I wonder what they're going to do to this one, because for Revenge of the Mummy, they enhance digital effects, but there aren't any on Jurassic Park. So I guess I will get to see what they do, and if it's something so unnoticeable that you don't see it, or if it's something noticeable like that. So something that can be very unnoticeable if you're not a Universal Orlando annual pass holder can be found in my next topic. U to the O to the A to the P news, because this week we got the new button released. It's going to be themed after King Gator from Mardi Gras, and kind of makes sense because this is when the event will start. Also now, pass holders get a free upgrade to a family suite in the Cabana Bay Resort. So if you want to stay in one of these hotels and you are a pass holder, now is the time for that pass to shine. So that's everything that I could find in this topic, but let's look at what I have in my next topic. Merchandise, a topic that is quite short and doesn't have any crazy updates in it this week. So this week, some vintage photos from the old Ben and Jerry's are for sale in the Williams Prop Shop, meaning that if you still want a bit of Ben and Jerry's or you just want to have part of this restaurant in your house, you can now do so. So that's everything that I could find in Universal Studios Orlando this week. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, hitting a notification bell. It helps my channel out as it pushes it through the YouTube algorithm and gets me more and more views. I know I'm never going to be monetized, but I'd at least like to see 100 views on my video. Anyway, yet again, thank you so much for watching. You've made my day. And with all of that said and done, this is Winu, signing off.